Hi all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Ollie. I sew clothes, quilt, embroider, have a particular soft spot for cross stitch and an ever increasing collection of vintage sewing machines. You'll meet most of them in my videos. This channel shares my passion for all things sewing and hopes to dispel the myth to do, that to enjoy your sewing hobby you have to buy all the latest toys, patterns and gadgets. You don't. Sewing isn't about how much you spend, it's about the fun you have in making things and creating your own style. Say hi to my cat. This is Biscuit. Hello. If that's something that interests you, subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell to get notified each time I upload a video. Take this top. It's an example of creating my own style. It's a pattern hack from Simplicity 2568, a pattern which dates back to 2009. I have a blog post on the changes that I made, I'll put a link in the comments below. But it just goes to show the little imagination you can achieve the look you want by recycling or hacking together parts from older patterns. Today's video is about a bit of a hack. It's a time-saving hack which could be causing sewists across the globe to lose valuable time rather than gain any. To find out what I mean, let's get right into today's video. Today's video is about the hidden danger to all sewing machines regardless of age. It could be argued though that it is more deadly to older machines due to the availability of parts. But this practice, this worldwide sewing hack to speed up sewing time, has the potential to kill even a modern machine. It's a practice that can literally stop you in your sewing tracks and cost a small fortune in repairs. You might even have to fork out for a new machine. When you consider the cost of machines can be anything from a few bucks second hand to thousands brand new from a dealer, it can turn out to be an expensive shortcut. So what is this habit that can be such a menace to machines? It's sewing over pins and I'm going to show you why. With chopsticks. My cat's sitting on the other one, there is a pair honestly. <laughs> First though, let's see why sewing over pins is so popular. I'm going to use Grandma to demonstrate. She's a singer, 27 from 1912. I have a video on how to work her. I'll put the link in the description box below. For this demonstration, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a straight line. Once with pins and once while sewing over the pins, just so that we can see the speed difference. So first up, we're going to have with pins but not sewing over them. Second up we're going to leave the pins in and sew over the top. Well, we're not, because we're not really going to be using pins for this one. We're just going to pretend we've got pins and we're just going to sew a straight line and see the speed difference. See the difference? The second line was so much faster at least what 20 seconds when you have long seams though those few seconds of extra time saved can really add up but is it worth it what happens to your machine to find out we need to look at how a sewing machine works and for that I'm going to use the hand wheel okay as I turn the hand wheel you'll notice that the needle goes down just at the right time to connect with the bobbin to pull that bobbin thread up like so. It's got a bit caught. There you go. The timing is balanced to perfection and that is why sometimes people call the hand wheel the balance wheel. The thing is this balance or timing is delicate and can be easily thrown off. When you're sewing over pins it's like playing needle roulette, dodging at worst a bent pin or two if the needle doesn't sail over the top. The truth is that needle doesn't always miss. Let me grab the chopsticks a minute and I'll demonstrate what I mean. So this chopstick is the needle and this one lying down is the pin. I was going to use an actual needle and pin for this but they're just too small you wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. So here comes the needle 
and it's just merrily sewing away and it comes to the pin and sails straight over the top just keeps on going no harm done can you be absolutely sure did that chopstick needle miss the chopstick pin there is a chance that pins can be placed in the fabric in such a way that the needle will miss every time so that the pin is in exactly the right location for the needle to be in the up position when it goes under the foot it's probably mathematically possible to calculate the optimum position for each pin so that the needle definitely misses every time I can't help thinking that that would probably take up more time than you'd save by sewing over them to be honest especially as you'd have to adjust the maths every time you change the variable like different thread, thicker pins anything could throw the calculations way out it's no wonder that most over pin sewers just wing it the trouble is winging it means sooner or later your luck's gonna run out but it's okay because it's just a pen pin right unfortunately no let's get back to the chopsticks okay here comes the needle chopstick it's coming up against the pin oh no it's hit the pin but it's okay because it slid off to the front and it keeps going okay we're still sewing along happily with chopstick needle here comes the next pin it hits oh we're okay it slid to the back and we're still going oh we've got a bit of a thread loop there but we're okay we're not going to worry about it everything's fine we're still going still working here comes the needle again it's sewing along nicely and here's another pin and oh gosh darn it the needles hit the pin who saw that one coming and we've got bits of needle flying everywhere we've even got a broken chopstick well we made a right hack of that didn't we here's the thing that needle will hit that pin pretty much every time most times it will either push it out the way forwards or it'll push it out the way backwards like nothing happened Sometimes it will hit that pin head on, causing a bent pin, a broken needle, or both. Sometimes the end of the needle flies off into the room, your eye, your pet's eye, and sometimes it ends up inside the machine. The damage caused by sewing over pins isn't always easy to see, especially if part of the needle is embedded in your eyeball. Each time the needle has to push a pin out of the way or hit a pin, it can have a devastating effect effect on your timing not only that but if you've got bits of needle dropping down into the workings of the machine there's no telling what damage has been done until the machine starts to play up of course now all of a sudden your usually reliable machine is making a right hack out stitching you've got bird's nests and you're getting knotty needles in your bobbin area that's never a good thing the motor is making a funny noise and it will just not catch that bobbin thread and you're blaming the machine, complaining it's too old, too worn out. The repairman says it's going to take at least three or four weeks to fix it, and the best part of a couple of hundred bucks or more. So hundreds in repair bills, medical bills, vet bills, or even a new machine later. Were that extra 20 seconds or so worth it? I don't think so, which is why I don't sew over pins. Whether they're old or new, sewing so machines need to be pampered. They need to be treated with care, consideration and patience. They're a finely tuned machine built with precision, a precision that they need to keep in order to function properly. Besides, there are plenty of ways to speed up your sewing without damaging the machine. You could go pin free like commercial sewers and sew the seams bare. It's a bit like the sewing equivalent of going commando. No holes at all, just your hands holding the fabric straight. Or you could use plastic clips. They just get jammed under the foot so you literally can't sew over these you have to remove them as you get close to them I've got a, a video on plastic clips which I'll put a link to in the description box below but these little things could quite seriously save your machine the longer you can keep your machine running smoothly the more you save in both time sewing and money and regardless of your machine's age if you're kind to her she will give you years of triple free happy sewing and you can start treating her right by not sewing over pins. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll put links to previous videos and any products that I used in this one in the description box. The video isn't sponsored but I am an Amazon affiliate so we'll get commission on any qualified sales made through the product links below. 
it's not a lot, it's a bit like a tip really, and allows me to indulge in my other passion, which is chocolate. Let me know what projects you're working on and what equipment you use in the comments. I'd love to hear about your sewing adventures too. And if you've got any questions, just ask me in the comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if all things sewing is one of your passions, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to get notified when I upload another video. And remember, there's only one rule when it comes to sewing and it's this. Wherever you're sewing, whatever you're sewing, embrace your creativity and have fun. Thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.